All right, welcome everybody to a new chess opening tutorial and today we're going to look at the Evans Gambit. And this video is brought to you by Call Me Wisdom who complained that I made a video about the Petrov, I believe, and he demanded I will now make a tutorial about the Evans Gambit. I'm happy to do so to get my karma back up where it belongs. All right, so let's get to it. The Evans Gambit, what is this all about? Named after Larry Evans, a captain on the sea. That's about all I know. I think you have to look up more information on the internet if you are interested. And here we get to it, bishop c4. Now black plays bishop c5. And here white has different ways to play this position. You can just play the Italian game here with c3. But you can also play the Evans Gambit, which is b4. And by the way, whenever we say Gambit, then it involves the sacrifice of at least one pawn. So this is why we have this name Gambit. Okay, so this is the Evans Gambit, b4, offering this pawn. And black can take it in two ways, but usually you would not see him take with the knight, because this would leave the pawn on e5 undefended. So if black takes, he takes with the bishop. He can also deny the gambit, he can play bishop b6, but obviously this is not really that critical. If you're trying to refute the gambit, you need to accept the pawn for sure. And here white can, for example, continue with a4, a5, b5, along these lines. And this might be okay for black as well, but I think white is not worried about this line too much actually. I think black should go a6 here, not to allow b5. Yes, that's right. Otherwise, you'd lose the pawn on e5, and then black should be worried. But I don't want to spend much time on this. Let's get to the sacrificing lines here. Bishop takes b4. Now, what is the whole idea between uh, behind the Evans gambit? White plays c3 with tempo, because he attacks the bishop on b4, and he wants to create a strong center on d4. This is why he needs to play c3, so that he's able to take back with a pawn if black decides to take on d4. Here black has some choice available. The main move is bishop a5. What is considered to be safest is bishop e7. There's also bishop d6, but this is a little bit awkward. Possible but awkward for black because he's not able to play with d6 later on and get his bishop out. So I would not recommend this move for black. White can just develop naturally here and I think he has nice compensation. Let's begin looking at bishop e7 now white goes d4 and here the smart move for black is to go knight to a5 attacking the bishop and white could win back the pawn now as you probably noticed with knight takes e5 but black gets the bishop on c4 he can push d5 right away which is important to take away this center dominance for white and black is completely fine here no worries at all so this is not really a good try. Bishop d3 or bishop e2 are better tries. Let's begin with bishop e2. Now black can take on d4. Queen takes d4 and now to play d6, you can play d5 as Jan Gustafsson once did against me, which was a very interesting game. You can also probably play in different ways here, but already here it feels like white has something going for him. He has some compensation. So if black wants to play it safe, he just plays d6. He gives the pawn back and I don't think there's much for him to worry about. Play can develop like this and black just keeps developing his pieces. White structure is a little bit weakened on the queen side. On the other hand, this knight still has to come back into the game. Black might play with b5 later on. Still a slightly unbalanced pawn structure and chance for both sides, but black is okay here. And similarly, the play can develop after bishop d3. Here, black should just give back the pawn, d6. Once again, white takes, castle, castle. And here I also had two games with queen c2. Another game you can find on a channel, I'll link to it against Karpachev, even though I'm not sure if it's in German or English. Anyways, I'll check this. And this is, once again, you can play this position, you're just not better here. But white has some ideas connected to his four pawn majority against the three pawns here on the king side. 
interesting line for sure, just to play, just to get a game. So now let's see the main move bishop to a5. And here white goes d4. And now black usually takes on d4, but what has turned out on the top level is that d6 is a very good defensive move. And for me, honestly, the reason why I'm not playing this gambit anymore, because here white does not seem to get good chances for anything really. And you're pawned down, so you need to do something. And here it seems black is just defending. And there were some games with Anand involved and Nakamura and it showed that, and Karana as well, it showed that White is not really hoping for much. He regains the pawn, but he gives up the bishop and this seems just completely fine for Black. So if you want one recommendation against the Evans Gambit, I would say d6 is a safe bet. You have to check this a little bit, but I don't think there's too much White can do here. The main line is to take on d4 when the positions can get quite sharp and fat. Here the old main line is to castle but this turn out is pretty harmless because after knight g7 there are also other moves like d takes c3 and knight f6 but knight g7 is safe enough. Now after c takes d4 black answers with d5 takes, knight takes. White can stop black from castling here but Black's setup is very solid with the bishop on e6, knight on d5, and he also has this move, bishop b4 available. So white cannot really hope for more than some kind of perpetual as possible here, I believe. In this position, there's also the move knight to g5, d5, and now e takes d5, knight e5, queen takes d4, but f6, and theory has shown that black is doing very fine here as well. And might be even better already in this position. So it's very concrete play as you can tell and I want to show you one last line which is the new I would say main line more dangerous for black and a common move in these positions anyway to go queen b3 to have this battery attacking the pawn on f7. Black has to defend the pawn and he usually does in one of two ways queen e7 or queen f6 and after both I believe that white is getting Good compensation theoretically objectively might not be enough for an advantage but definitely in a practical game white can pose some problems here just a simple line like this and yes black could take on d4 but in either case white has the better development and this is what he goes after in this line anyway better development immediate pressure on the black pieces and this is the whole concept of this game and many again bits in fact so this is quite promising, in a practical game at least. And also after queen e7, I had a game here. Just want to show you how it developed. C takes d4, knight takes d4. Black is actually winning a second pawn, but white just goes for the development. Now knight d5, also move in the air, knight f6, bishop a3, d6, rook a d1, takes, takes. Castle, rook f1, and I want to stop right here to give you a sense. White has sacrificed two pawns, but all his pieces are in the game. All his pieces are doing something. He has ideas like e5, and this is not so easy to play for black, and I actually was able to win that game in the end. So this is the heart of the Evans gambit, is to sacrifice this pawn and then have quick development, put on pressure on the black player, and use this, use this initiative that you have to get something going. All right, this is my overview. Like I said, objectively speaking, Evans Gambit is not giving you any advantage. I think it's a good surprise weapon every once in a while if you want to play with the white pieces. If you are playing against with the black pieces, I would recommend looking into this move 6d6 simply or going back with the bishop to e7 after c3. Okay, let me know if you have any questions and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and leave a like for this video. All right, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.